I'm so excited for my guest today. We've known each other a long time and we've done a lot of things together. And so I can't wait to introduce you uh, formally in just a second. But for those of you that don't know who I am, um, you know, I'm a certified professional organizer. And yes, I sat for a test. And I'm also a money business breakthrough coach. And yes, I sat for a smaller test on that one. Um, but I have been exploring the intersection of people's money beliefs and their clutter and how it affects their productivity for the last several years. And I'm super fascinated by it. Not everyone is, but you get the gist. That's what we talk about on this show, how to be more productive, how to approach organizing from different places so that something will resonate with you and you can make a little bit of improvement at some point. Um, so, the show is all about exploring those things. And today I have with me Leslie Josell, who has been running Order Out of Chaos for, I don't know how, it's been like several years. <laughs> 17 to be exact. 17. Okay, so almost as long as I've been doing this. Um, but she got really focused and niched down much quicker than I am. So I just want to read a few of the things um, about her because. It's really quite impressive. And there's very few people in our industry that bother to learn and become ex true experts in the area that they pick to work with. So Leslie is an ADHD academic and parenting coach, and she's award-winning, and she guides parents and students through the trickiness that is ADHD and what that means it, and how to deal with that. And I always appreciate that because I have it too. And I didn't know for a long time. And then I started talking to Leslie and I'm like, I think I might have ADHD. And then I figured it out. <laughs> um, so that's fabulous. Um, and today we're gonna be talking mostly about her new book, which is how to do it now because it's not going away, an expert guide to getting things done. Um, and she did that uh after she created an academic planner a uh, tool for time management which is fantastic for students i'm like i can almost use it for running a business as well um in my opinion but we'll talk about that with leslie see if she thinks that's true um she writes columns and she has collaborated with samsil corporation who makes fabulous binders and document storage options for people um, as a global guru i'm also super excited to talk to her about that um, and I'll be darned, she loves entertainment magazines. <laughs> and I was just kicking myself the other day because I kind of do too. And yet I also really kind of hate them. <laughs> I think there is so much wrong with celebrity culture, but, um, I do get, um, I don't know. I like looking at fashion and I like seeing that they're actually real people. So there's that. What's your favorite entertainment magazine? There is that, and it's exactly why I use it. It's a great escapism from all the ADHD, executive functioning, parenting things that I read. Mm -hmm. So to be able to hide out in my car reading Us magazine, like it's just fun <laughs> and light and easy and mindless. And I'm also into the fashion. I'm yeah. so into the fashion. Yeah. Yeah. So I that. never have anywhere to wear any of the clothes that celebrities wear but <laughs> it's a big cat. Oh, right it's so yeah. fun to look at. so yes that is my secret if you ever need me and you don't know where to find me our supermarket parking lot with frozen yogurt and an entertainment <laughs> that's so oh. great um yeah i tend to um listen to weird podcasts about celebrity culture like the critique of the communication of celebrity culture so i get just enough of it okay. <laughs> from that okay um, but that's fascinating okay so yes today we're going to be talking about your book yeah. um students and all that yeah. stuff tell me when did it actually come out it came out a year ago almost to the day yeah. it came out last october so what was really fascinating about it, it was written pre-pandemic. It was actually written over the mm. summer of 2019 into that fall and put to bed, if you can believe it, January of 2020. And then, I know, crazy. And then the pandemic hit, virtual learning hit, procrastination in all its 
forms hit and then the book came out last October. So although it wasn't written as a so just to clarify, the book is geared to teens and college students with not with ADHD or LD, it's just geared to teens and college students. It's all about procrastination and understanding why they why teens procrastinate and then ways to obviously manage it. But um, it just it came out at the right time in the, in the right space because a lot of it is, was very applicable to what was going on in the world at the time. Yeah, I find um, that's interesting. You talk about procrastination and COVID. I found myself for like the first three years, th three years. <laughs> Time is so weird now. Okay, so the first three weeks of COVID, I found myself talking all my friends who do not work at home through how to work at home and how to do the virtual stuff and how to um, create some structure and 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 take away their distraction. So that was interesting because I spent my first three weeks just talking people off the ledge. It felt like. Yes. Do you find that? Um, differently because remember I'm in the parent and student space and predominantly working with parents who have neurodiverse children. So imagine the pandemic hit, schools shut down, now everybody's home, and parents like we had the opposite. Or I mean. Yeah our business exploded, um, people looking for mm -hmm. resources and how do I manage this virtual learning um, for my students. Yeah, so it was different. It was very different. And the interesting thing is um, people ask me all the time, no, we did, I did not bake one loaf of bread during COVID. <laughs> we were so busy um, doing as many webinars and Facebook Lives and interviews that we could to be really able to be there for our community to show up in any way we possibly could to help. So we were crazed, busy, busy, like, yeah, busy. it makes sense. Um, everybody had to turn on a dime. Our businesses, yeah. our uh, plans. I had a, yes. a couple of things planned too that I had to kind of shelve for a little while, but they'll be coming out soon. Yeah. Um, anyway, this is, uh, I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV, and we need to take a break. So we'll be back after the break. The free one minute mail solution works for email too, and you can download it at the link below or over there. Maybe it's a, the link. I'm talking today with Leslie Josell of Order know why I keep wanting to say a different name of your business. I've known it forever. Order out of chaos. I keep wanting to leave the out of out. Just order chaos. <laughs> want to call it, it's fine. <laughs> we're shortening it today. <laughs> order out of chaos. Um, and we're talking about her book, How to Do It Now, because it's not going away. An expert guide to getting stuff done. And it's focused on teens and college students, but there's lots of for adults to learn in there too. I just finished it this week. And um, so tell me a little bit, Leslie, about how you decided to specialize in procrastination and ADHD in uh, students. Well, I didn't necessarily decide I wanted to specialize in procrastination, but students has always been my jam. Um, 17 years ago, Order Out of Chaos was born, and I was born because my son, who is now 23, was diagnosed with ADHD, executive dysfunction, host of other learning issues. And this is a super true story. You have to remember back then, there were not TV shows, podcasts, webinars, right. none of that existed. So I really had to rely on my own instincts and my own gut to find ways to untangle his world, both at home and at school. Yeah, because then it was just, here's some drugs, good luck. Exactly. There you go. Right. And I wasn't, I really wanted to figure out ways like in the trenches, you might say. And what I did back then would, would, would be considered back then pretty revolutionary. Maybe not so much now. Like it dawned on me to take the closet door off his bedroom door because what he, what he didn't see didn't exist or take out the dresser and line the walls with clear bins so that it didn't take him multiple steps to do something. And I did a million that things brilliant. like that. When I read that in your book, I'm like, that is so brilliant. But no one taught me to do that. That was a very much about instinct and watching what really frustrated him versus mm. what he really was drawn to. And this is a so such a true story. Friends of friends, you know, this one saw what I did, said I have a, you know, you know how it goes. I have a friend and I have a friend, and this is literally true, 
within two weeks, I had four phone calls saying, I know what you did in your own home. Can you come to mine? And I wasn't doing this for a living. I didn't know this was a living. And I turned to my <laughs> husband who has ADHD and I said, but I, I have a job. And I said, I don't do this for a living. And he went, you do now. And at that time I was going family to family, house to house, really specializing on families that had children with ADHD, really trying to create structures and systems and routines that would work. And now 17 years later, we are a global online, completely virtual company. And we offer products and programs and workshops and webinars is what you said to parents, um, you know, to help parents guide their students to learning and in life. Um, but students have always been my jam. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be as blunt as you are. Um, I pick pick hanging out with students any day of the week <laughs> over adults. But because I think kids are just three dimensional and they're still being they're still being built. Um, yeah. And there's so much coolness and they're interesting and especially those that are neurodiverse. So. Mm. That is kind of why I gravitated um, to working working with kids and building my company around that um, premise. Parents are always looking for ways to help their kids. It's as bottom line as it gets. Yeah, yeah. it's. Um, I find it really interesting too how um, I, I find a lot of the parents that I work with end up thinking that somehow their kids know automatically what to do about it. And then all of a sudden they realize, oh, I could help them learn something that will help. And and also how many people get the label of ADD or ADHD and then they just kind of, okay, so that's the excuse. I don't right. have to fix it or I don't have to deal with how to cope with right. it or management. learn. Yeah, management. Yes. Is and, that and something you found? I find it all the time that, you know, we find, look, there's all different levels of how parents show up. Some are right. in denial, some are overwhelmed, mm -hmm. um, and some are all in between. But, you know, what we really try to do is is teach parents um, how to, not only just parent kids with, you know, that are neurodiverse, but even mainstream kids, because, you know, a lot of what has come out of our work is what we call universal learning, meaning we mm -hmm. all know what universal design is, right? The curb right. cuts in the sidewalk were, were put there specifically for a certain population that might have had a physical impairment. But we found that, you know, people pushing a stroller or a shopping cart or even luggage, everybody benefits from those. Right. It's the same thing with universal learning. It's the line these days of this just working specifically for this type of student and then we'll do something completely different for those that are more mainstream has really become much more, much more together and much less black and white. So what we're seeing yeah. is what we do for kids that might learn differently benefits all kids, which is actually, I didn't even think of it this way, is why I wanted to write, write this book, because if you if you read the book, you'll see ADHD is not mentioned anywhere in the book until the very, very end. There's there's a disclaimer mm -hmm. that obviously if your child might seem, a, you know, have ADHD or executive functioning challenges, here's something else. And when my publisher approached me, they're like, we want you to write a book that's mainstream, but yet touches on all students. Yeah. And there's nothing that touches on all students more than procrastination. It is a universal epidemic. It really is. Um, there's so much coming at us these days. Like, wh where do I stop? Where do I land? And um, more and more people are diagnosed all the time or self-diagnose thinking that that's the problem when it may or may not be. It could exactly. just be not having the right habits developed and stuff, which I think is going to be really interesting. But I'm super excited to circle back to the fact that you just made a new connection because that's what the streamlined connection is all about. Ha talking things through, thinking it through, seeing where it hits other places. Um, so organizing is not one of those things that's just going to affect one area of your life. It doesn't just affect your closet or your pantry. It starts changing 
all the different areas of your life. So I'm super excited that you were talking about universal design because that's the whole point of the show. How do we make it better? Be better all the time. All right, so I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And we have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're gonna talk more about uh, procrastination specifically in students and different ways that um, perhaps we can help everybody not procrastinate quite as much. We'll be back after the break. The Streamline Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The link's around here somewhere. Um, okay, so tell me a little bit about the connection between procrastination and students. What's going on with students these days? So here's, here's a crazy stat for you. Um, and I think this is what really, for me, not only jogged the reason why I wanted to write a book about procrastination, but how I wrote it. So this crazy study was done a few years ago. The study was done prior to the pandemic. I forgot who did it, but that they found that 90% of all teens and college students, so it's a bigger number, 13 on up, procrastinated about 90% of the time. Now, to understand procrastination is to understand that it's not black and white. So it, they, they didn't really delve into like, what does that look like? And I did though, because you have to understand the reason why it resonated with me so much is because a day doesn't go by that in either, whether on a webinar or a Facebook group or a parenting groups, that that is probably the number one thing we hear the most from parents and students is my student procrastinates or the student says I procrastinate and yet their definition of procrastination, mm. very different. So yeah. the right? It's so interesting. And I'm going to, so that all of your viewers understand how I view procrastination. I remember I'm in the trenches with all of these people is what happens most is we hear that procrastination is, is when you delay doing something. Mm -hmm. And that's where the definition stops. So automatically yeah. parents are like, well, my child has something due in five days and they haven't started yet. They are procrastinating. However, that's not my definition. Yeah. My definition of procrastination is delaying or putting something off, knowing that there will be a consequence on the other side. And yeah. that's true procrastination. <clears throat> And that's I the think piece that's missing. Yes, I love that. I actually actually wrote down in my notes to ask you about was the definition of procrastination because I find a lot for myself and a lot of my clients that there's a percolation period that looks a lot like procrastination for especially creative people, but exactly. when compared to people that operate more on a I need to make a plan and check everything off the plan spectrum you know there's the three different operating systems for our brains of where we process information and that can have an effect on what procrastination looks like for each of us so imagine this and this doesn't happen that often but i have a parent and a student on a split screen zooming right. and the parent is going i don't understand it's friday afternoon he has all the time in the world why isn't he starting now why isn't he starting now it's it's due on tuesday and the parents getting heated, and this is a true story. And the 16 year old mm -hmm. was a boy turned to and happened to have been his mom. And trust me, I get mom or dad. We're not disparaging. <laughs> They're one. I want to make sure I say that. And the, the 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 student turns to his parent and says, My thing is due at 11:59 on Tuesday. You can yell at me at midnight. Right. And that was so powerful because there it was in all its glory where the parent is going, he should, he should, he should. This is how I see it. He's procrastinating and he's saying, I have it under control. Friday doesn't work for me. I've already planned that I'm gonna spend all day Sunday because the closer I get to a deadline, the more activated I will be. Now I know that's a yeah. simple example, <clears throat> but it's so indicative of all this gray matter and all of this that we're seeing. Yeah. So, when I set out to write this book and they came after me, I said, here's what I wanted. I didn't want the book to solely be my voice. And I've been mm -hmm. in the trenches for 17 years. Do the math. I have a thousand kids that I've seen in various capacities. 
the end, I have a lot of stories. What I wanted to do was it not just be this one note, here's what the expert has to say. I wanted it to be my students' stories. I wanted their voices and their reasons and what is really going on with this, this age group to come to life. So if you go through the book, you'll see we actually went back and interviewed as many kids we could find. So it's anecdotal. It's not like research proven, but it's right. which I think is better actually. It's it is for this kind of learning, definitely. It's super anecdotal, where we really dive into like some very like you know em emotional important questions like why did you procrastinate and what was so difficult for you versus things that are super fun like. Okay, what's the best grade you got for something like, you know, you didn't work on or what was the time you used your friends the most and what we found now I knew a lot of this obviously because I'm in the trenches, but the two themes that really came out and this is really where the difference between like how a student or why a student procrastinates versus why an adult does mm -hmm. is two big reasons. Number one was skill. Mm -hmm. What we don't realize is, remember, these are under underdeveloped brains. So if you have a student who does not know how to do something like study or plan, you know, or organize even, they're just not going to do it. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that sounds so pedestrian, but it's but it's really powerful if you think about it. It's very skill based. Mm -hmm. And the other one, which is very different, is choice and control. Mm -hmm. Because think about it, these are kids that are told when to do something, how to do something, like where to do something, and they have very little voice over their own best practices. Exactly. So those were our themes. And I think that really, so as much as this book is geared to teens and college students, parents have been reading it going, I did not know that. It never dawned on me. Wow, I'm yeah. looking at all of this in a very different light because it's really telling. It's like it's really telling their kid's story. Yeah, I feel like um, often my clients expect some organizing skills and time management skills to be just like automatically in our brains, and it doesn't occur to them that they didn't train their kid how to clean their room, and then they're all mad about the room not being clean. Or they, we don't learn how to um, study anymore either, which you talk about in the book a bit. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about this after the break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. We'll be back. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. I'm talking with Leslie Josell of Order Out of Chaos about procrastination um, and how it might be a little different for students and adults or what we can learn from each other about how to overcome it or do we even need to overcome it? Is there another way of looking at it? That's what do you think? Um, I like to say that you manage it. Mm. I don't like to say that you overcome anything because I think that's like you're setting a bar too high. I think mm. you have to remember, I'm always looking at it through the lens of a student. Yeah. So in my world, there's no wrong or right. Well, there's wrong or right if you're really doing something illegal or immoral, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Other than that, I don't like I don't like black and whites. I don't like it's wrong or it's right or you need to get over it or we need to fix it. So I prefer manage it because I feel manage it gives you wiggle room to accomplish goals. So that's just, love that. I'm so happy you do. But, <laughs> but that's just how remember I'm I look at everything through the lens of the student, not the lens of the parent. So the fix it, the get over it, that all of that language is like not allowed in my universe. Yeah, just do it. Or Matt, right, no. <laughs> So manage it really, manage it also has progression to it, right? And it has a progression, it has steps, it, it's goal oriented, but yet it's not a one goal. It can be, it can be structured so that it's mini goals. So what I find when I, when we talk about managing procrastination, even in my own work with kids, 
they're much more apt to rise to the occasion than like, okay, we're gonna get you over this. You know, not gonna happen. So not gonna happen. So right. yes, managing it, and we, you know, we look at it from different lenses. And the choice and control one is a really good one because as much as a student thinks that they don't have choice and control, they actually do. They actually do, particularly as they get older. So yes. as they get older, they do. Like, so you might not have, so just as an example, you might not have control of how, of like your homework assignment because a teacher gives you homework and that's it. But when you study, that's actually where you do have choices, particularly in college, no one cares how you study. So we really tap into those best practices. We really tap into those anti-boring ways of getting stuff done. Like if you're a musical theater kid and you like to sing and dance, well, we're gonna we're gonna learn the Greek alphabet that way. Or, you know, if you like to stand up and move, then we're gonna hang giant sticky notes all over your walls so you can, you know, do the <laughs> sticky dance. Sorry. But that <laughs> No, I'm not rolling my eyes. I'm looking at my sticky notes. <laughs> You mean like this? <laughs> Look at that. I don't have big ones, That's but I have great. the magnetic ones right. on my file cabinet. So we we do teach students that you can tap into your best practices. You can figure out what's your best time. How do you show up best? Do you like to have do you like to juggle juggle multiple things? Or do you like long lead times or short lead times? There is a lot of choice and control, as I will say this, as you get older. And, and that's what, that has been one of the things that we've noticed that has really helped with procrastination in students is allowing them to really truly figure out what their best practices are and then tap into those. Yeah, um, that reminds me of in, in the book, you talked about um, creating a structure, enough structure that people could, um, I guess it's basically time blocking, but but you don't actually go quite that far in the book, um, but to create enough structure with their schedule that they know where that control has to come in So and how the choices are going to affect that. That's such a good point you made. And so you have to remember, again, I keep saying the same thing, that we come at it from the lens of the student. So what's going to work for a kid is not necessarily well, what works for an adult. So the time blocking, uh, uh, not happening. Like yeah. put a fork in them, they're done. It's so not gonna happen. However, what does work for a kid is what we call like scheduling the unscheduled. Right. That actually works when we reverse it, because usually, you know, productivity consultants, I'm one, you are one, go, okay, we've got to schedule our to-dos and what has to get done. We tend to do it the opposite with students. We're like, what is the time you want free? What is the time you want to have where you don't have to do a freaking thing? Mm -hmm. It's a very different way of doing things, but remember, we're playing to that brain. And they're like, well, I don't want to do anything on a Saturday. I want one day, I'm like, great, bubble wrap it, literally bubble wrap it, put bubble wrap around that day. Now we've got to feed the other days. And what happens is them knowing that they have that time whether it's a Friday afternoon, a Saturday, maybe it's Monday nights. A lot of my kids, it's Sunday night football, whatever it is. They're more apt to activate, mm -hmm. to do what they have to do when they know that there is time where they don't. That yeah. goes back to choice and control. Yeah, I found that myself. Um, I schedule that way and I, I teach a combo for my clients because I know different people think differently, but I block out my free time first and it changed my life and I am so I much more productive. And sometimes people are like, why aren't you working right now? I'm like, it's lunchtime. I take an hour off. <laughs> because, and I do it guilt free. And that's yeah. what's really amazing for a student when they say mm -hmm. I, after three o'clock on a Friday, Leslie, I, I don't want to even, I'm like, you earn that right. That's totally fine. They're like, that's why I'm okay about working on a Sunday. And it's it's a different way of looking at it. I've had to teach parents that that's an okay way to look at it. I look at it that way. But again, you're doing a lot of things there. You're not only, yes, it's not only that whole choice and control piece, but you're learning how to prioritize. You're learning how to plan. You're even learning how what I call future awareness. 
on time. Mm -hmm. So it's just coming at it from a different, you know, a different perspective. I think it also creates that built in reward when you're trying to develop new habits. Mm -hmm. Like you have to have a reward and it may not be completely identified and it may not be being used to the ultimate in this fashion, but it does provide a reward for doing the behavior that you plan to do. So, and it's immediate, which is key and it's micro, which is key. Yes. So many ways that ties together. Oh my gosh. I am so excited. The streamlined connection, it's tying up in a bow, all the things. We got some operating systems in our brains. We've got um, other neuro, is it neurotypical? Is that the current wording? Neurotypical? Neurotypical, Neurodiverse, yeah. Diverse uh, ways of of working with our brain. We have traditional productivity models and knowing that we don't learn automatically. We have to be taught or seek it. So thank you so much, Leslie. We're going to wrap it up after the break. And I am Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. Welcome back. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And apparently I'm not very good at time because we have a whole other segment we get to talk about time i don't know (laughs) i lost track of it somehow it happens to all of us (laughs) so yeah (laughs) so time there's internal time there's external time yeah there's and um i'm kind of curious about this because i'm not sure i fully understand your perspective on this Okay. Here in New Mexico, a lot of us still pretend that we know how to tell time by the sun in the sky, but you're in New York and you can't really see it all the time. So, <laughs> uh, and in New York, we call it a New York minute, which is like right. that's the time, right? So, okay. Here's here's how here's how I view time. Here's how I teach time. Here's just all about time. So I firmly believe this is my motto, my mantra, whatever you want to say, is that. For you to be, you need to be able to see time in order to learn how to manage it. Right. And I feel that that in and of itself, remember, coming from the the lens of a parent and a student, I mean, I think that probably resonates with everybody, but I'm going to come from that, that, that perspective. So there's a lot of this, like, you should be able to, like, you know, we're leaving and I am a firm believer that we need to be able to see it. So yeah. how do you see time? You have to externalize it as much as you can to be able to internalize it. Because if you are truly time blind or don't know where you sit in time, it's like the equivalent of being on a boat that is completely unmoored. Like you don't see horizon anywhere. So mm-hmm. here's what I mean by that. Um, I'm pretty time managed. I'm a time management expert. You know all that. And in my office right now alone, I have six things that externalized time for me. You can't see all of them, but I have a wall calendar, a planner, I have a phone, I have a timer, I have a watch, and I think you can see on my back wall, I have an analog clock. Mm-hmm. All of those things help that are externalized, but all help mm-hmm. me to internalize time. It helps me feel time. It helps me see time. It helps me know where I sit in time. That's what I mean by internalize it. Yeah. So when I ask parents or challenge parents in a nice way, I'm never rude. I'm a little feisty, but never rude. <laughs> I'm a New Yorker, for God's sake. I'm like, how are you externalizing time in your home or for your student? And most of the time they'll say, well, my kid has a phone. I'm like, no, 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 no. That doesn't help you internalize time because your phone only gives you one time. And that's the present. Yeah. It doesn't let you see time move. It doesn't let you see 10 minutes from now, 20 minutes ago. And the, the most powerful thing, and I could do a whole thing just on time when it comes to students, but the most powerful thing for students is being able to see done. I call it the power of done. Because for a student to activate, so here's that procrastination thing again, not only activate, but stay the course, they not only have to see where they start, they gotta see where they're going and where they're finishing. And a clock helps them do that. Yeah, I 
you know, we grew up with the analog clock on the wall in our classrooms. And yeah. I was recently in a school picking up my niece and there wasn't a clock in her classroom and they didn't have them during COVID when they were doing virtual learning. And it was kind of like, huh, I wonder what that's doing to everybody. <laughs> so we, there is actually a movement to go back to putting analogs back in because even yeah. students will tell you when they're sitting in a class and they're losing focus and they're losing effort and they have that brain drain, they'll look around the room for something to tether them to the time. Yeah, because if they see that they only have five minutes left, they wiggle in their chair. They 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 re effort level themselves. They might move right. a book. They pick up a pen, and they can pause themselves, picture the end, and then pace to the finish line. Exactly, it totally helps with procrastination. It is massively helpful. Yeah, I wear a analog watch. And I have clients that are like, oh, I, I thought you would have an Apple Watch. And it's like, no, no, that stuff's on the phone. I don't need to carry two different things. And I need to see the second hand, which may or may not have something to do with me losing track of time during the um, TV show. Because I can't just like stare at my watch. I, I need that. a clock right there. I have you. one. I have, I have a note to order it because I think that's part of the problem on the TV show. But um, yeah, no, it's fantastic. It's um, it's like when you're running a marathon, you don't run all the way to the end. You know there's an end, but you run to the next light pole. And I think especially for students, it's in, you know, this is this subject, this is that subject, this is the next subject, this is my class, this is my study time. Like, it gives you a chance to get to each next step. Well, it helps with focus and effort. It helps with transitions, which we mm -hmm. don't talk enough about, that whole transition piece. Yeah. But it, and even during, and for even during COVID, it was or online learning, it was probably one of the most useful tools we had because a student could pace their effort level to say, okay, I know I have five minutes left, but the most important thing is the I keep calling it the power of done. Yeah. Because it because when you can see the sweep of time, it allows you to see where you sit in time and therefore you can manage your time. Mm-hmm. So that whole one piece digital just does not does not work. It's it's that whole feeling of being unmoored. So if there's one tip that I want everybody to hear me say is you need an analog clock, not not only in like one room, you need one in every room every. that your child spends time in, especially the bathroom. Yeah, that's the easiest place for it to, to lose. Get lost, to get um, lost. I realized just a couple weeks ago that now that I listen to podcasts, I used to listen to morning radio. And there were cues because they were keeping time for me. And so when the news started or the weather report came on, I knew where I was in my half hour of getting ready. And now that I listen to podcasts, it's random. The right. breaks are random. And so it's like, oh, yeah, I got to really remember about continuing to get ready. So I set my timer while I'm getting ready in the morning in the bathroom because I, I will lose all track of time. That's I fascinating. Yeah. So you, um, you playlists can do the same thing mm -hmm. for you. You're listening to a playlist over and over again. It starts yeah. to act as a timekeeper. Exactly. exactly. That ah, I love this. Oh, my gosh. We could talk so much. Yes. <laughs> but that's a good takeaway for all of you at home. Right. Analog okay. Box. So when we come back, uh, we will recap and, and review everything that we've learned today. So many aha moments for me today. Um, I can't wait. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. We'll be right back. Get the Streamlined Time Solution online course and learn easy ways to control your time and tasks. Links here somewhere. Down there, I think. This has been such an exciting show. So much has come out, um, especially about the connections, about how all of these things connect up to make us more productive um, and less procrastinating. I just made up that word. Is that a word, procrastinating? I like that word, procrastinating. <laughs> I'm taking that home with me. I like that. Yeah, okay. Um, so while the focus has been on students, there's so many pieces that um, grownups can learn from in terms of figuring out your time, orienting yourself. Where are you in your minute, your, your hour, your day, your week, your month? or even your year, uh -huh. okay, so um, <laughs> just like for
friends say, you got to yeah. know where you're at. Um, oh, yeah. But also the connections between different people's processes and the fact that we have to learn about these things. And so it's so great that Leslie has some resources. Leslie, yeah. you want to tell everyone where they can find your resources? So here's what I'm going to tell you. The name of my company is Order Out of Chaos. Our website is orderoochaos.com. And I like to say it's like one stop shopping. If you are looking for articles, interviews, videos, please go there. There's everything you can go there. And from there, you can get everywhere you want to be. But I want to let you know that obviously, along with the books, we have this fabulous download that is free. And it's it kind of speaks to exactly what we've been talking about. It's called a personal homework profile. It is 16 questions that you can download cost nothing. And what it does is it allows you to go step by step with your student and ask them really interesting probing questions about their personality when it comes to getting stuff done. Mm. Everything from, do you like to do one subject at a time to switching on and off? Do you like long lead times or a lead time right in front of you? Are you a morning? Are you a night? Do you like music or quiet, open spaces, the bathtub because it's cozy and cold? It's going to ask you a million questions, but what it really does is it taps into your best practices so that you can get stuff done. Oh, I bet it works for adults too. Yes. And their work style. Yeah. Yes. It's so okay. important to figure out how you process information to stay Absolutely. organized and productive. So love that. Right. Okay. So thank you so much for being here, Leslie. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure we'll have you back at some point. Okay. Um, don't forget, everybody, that you can also go to um, morethanorganized.net, and there are some free resources for you on my website as well. And next time, I'm going to be talking a little bit uh, from a different perspective about focus and habits and how that can affect your productivity and why you want to create as many habits as you can to take that stuff off, off of your brain. Um, and as always, comments, questions, theories, feedback are welcome. You can send those to Miriam at morethanorganized.net. And tell all your friends, because getting organized is so much more fun when other people are involved. Um, and in the meantime, have a delightful day. This is Miriam Ortiz Pino of the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. See you next time.